Welcome back to the Kansas Simmons Show. Now today, we're going to talk about a topic that's dear to my heart. Uh, I want to dive in and talk about the skills that students are learning in school and are those skills preparing them for life? Yeah, like is, is getting good grades just enough? Is getting good grades really preparing our students for their future and their life? Yeah, I'm going to talk about outside of the textbook, outside the classroom, what needs to be done? What skills should our students have so they can be a success in life? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you seven. Yeah, I'm going to give you seven skills I believe that students should have so they can be successful in life. Welcome to the Cantus Simmons Show. Hey, 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 what's going on? I am Kansas Simmons. Thank you for joining me here on the Kansas Simmons Show. Of course, I'm irrationally passionate about school success and life success. And today I want to talk about uh, the seven skills that I believe students need to have so they can be successful in life. And um, this conversation is based off of a study that I hear is going on where it says A students work for the government and B students work for corporations and C students start enterprises. And then it goes on to say that A students end up working for the C students. And it said there's no correlation between uh, getting good grades in school and actually um, doing really, really well in life. And so I've developed this whole series off of school success, school skills versus life skills, and talking about some of the skills that uh, I believe our students should have. They, the students should, these students should be developing, whether it's in school, whether it's taught by a parent, a teacher, a mentor, a coach, uh, these schools, these skills should be taught. And uh, while you're here, I'm going to give you two free, cool, amazing gifts. If you or your household uh, need a little help with finding money for college, I would love to send you a free copy of my book, Scholarship Secrets Revealed. Uh, it talks about how to locate, land, and lock down college funds. If you go to the website, scholarshipsecretsbook.com, scholarshipsecretsbook.com, I would love to put this in the mail and send it to you. All I ask you to do is just take care of the free, uh, take care of the small shipping and handling fee. And if you also need a little help academically and want access to uh, my best-selling academic success book, uh, maybe you or your student having challenges with staying motivated in school or staying focused in school or knowing how to study. Hey, Play Your A Game is the book that's going to help you do that. So if you click the link down below or go to playyouragamebook.com, I would love to send this over to you and your household and uh, help you get those grades and help you find the money you need for college. So click those links down below. All right, let's jump into it. <laughs> My alarm going off there. Let's jump into it. What are the key skills that are needed outside of the classroom? And before I do that, let me show you this video where, where all of this is actually coming from. Watch this video real quick so you understand what I heard and why I'm doing this series. Watch this video. Finally, you will see that people who are excellent at school become mediocre in life because the thinking and the skill set is very different. So I said, if you can be excellent at both, wonderful. But I don't mind if you're mediocre in school, but you have no choice. You must excel in life. Excelling at school with excelling in life. There is no correlation, by the way. In fact, the majority of A grade students end up working for the government. B grade students end up working for corporations. C grade students end up setting up enterprises because the C grade students, they're good learners, but they don't like being forced to do things so they're independent thinkers so we want to cultivate independent thinking in our children otherwise our children will work for the C grade students to make the C grade students rich wow <laughs> wow all right and uh, I love in that video where he talks about it's okay if they're good in school 
and they're good in life. Like, that's great. And that's the heartbeat that I have. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I was an A student, right? I got good grades in school. Got good grades in high school. Got good grades in college and grad school. And guess what? My first job was working for the government, where I worked at NASA. And then I also, in my career, I worked in corporation, working with CBA Vision, where I developed contact lenses as a research scientist. And I've started enterprises. So school success doesn't equal life success. However, I want to make sure that our students have both. All right, so that's why I talk all about school success. But I want to give you seven. I'll give you my seven. You know I'm the coolest guy with 7.25 fingers. But let me give you seven skills uh, that I believe every student should cultivate. Uh, whether you learn this in school, whether you learn this in your household, whether you learn this outside of school, here are seven important school skills every student uh, should develop. And these are my personal seven based on uh, what I've seen in my life. All right. So the first skill is critical thinking and problem solving. And I'll, I'll probably write these down here so we can keep track of them. All right. Critical thinking and problem solving. All right. Critical thinking and problem solving. Let me say PS. Problem solving. Now, what does that mean? Being able to think in such a way that you can solve problems. Now, I say this all the time, and I want you to hear me. If you can solve problems, you will always get paid. Yeah, if you can solve somebody else's problem, you will always get paid. Whatever job, whatever career field you choose to go into, they're not paying you for your good grades. They're not paying you for your good looks. They are paying you to solve problems. Like when I end up working at NASA or when I end up working at SEBA Vision, they wanted me to solve problems around the different products that they have. And I think it's so important that uh, it's just not about memorizing facts, right? It's just not about analyzing information. Well, it's not just, it's not just about memorizing facts but it's also knowing how to analyze information so you can solve a problem. So that's the skill number one that every student, I believe, should develop in right now, right? And you guys identify where, where you want to learn this skill, all right? Where you want to learn this skill. So that's problem solving. All right, the second skill is in the area of effective communication. Effective communication. Now, of course, today I'm a full-time speaker, and I speak all over the world, standing on stages. Of course, I'm standing, well, sitting here in this video. But the power of effective communication. Now, the other day, um, I was having a conversation with another STEM professional and then the STEM education profession, and they're actually over in the Middle East. And guess what? There are some things going over here in the United States that's a little different of what's going on in the Middle East. However, both of us have a passion for STEM education. Guess what? Even with our differences of background, we still have to have effective communication so we can discuss how we can partner on this project. Also where effective communication is concerned is being able to express your ideas. Now let's say for example, you got an amazing cool idea or your student has an amazing cool idea, but they're not able to effectively communicate that idea so that idea can never turn into a product, into a service, into an invention. Why? Because they lack effective communication. So in any field, if you're in finance, if you're in marketing, if you're in science, if you're in engineering, if you're in sports, if you're in athletics, if you're in business, it's so key that you have skill number two, 
effective communication skill. Let's look at the third skill. The third skill, I would say, is time management and organization. Yes, the third skill is time management and education. Now, let's talk about time management and organization for a while. Now, I personally, I don't like to use the word time management, right? Like here's my, my Apple Watch here. I don't have it on, but I'll put it on here. Guess what? I can't stop the time on my watch. I can't start the time on my watch. I can't pause the time, right? Time is always happening. So I can't manage time. But here's what I do recommend is managing myself. Yeah, there are 168 hours in the week, 24 hours a day, seven days in the week, 60 seconds in a minute. I can't stop that. But what I can do is stop myself. I can start myself. So rather than time management, we have to understand self-management, right? Now, how do we organize all of that? How do we manage ourselves to effectively do academics? How do we manage ourselves to do our social lives? How do we manage ourselves to do our personal life, time with our family? Maybe you wanna start a business. Maybe you're doing extracurricular activities or playing sports. How are you managing all of that? How are you staying organized with all the things that are going on? That's why the third skill that I believe every student needs to master is in this area of management and organization, whether you call it time management or self-management, that's the third skill, time management and organization. Let me give you this fourth skill. Financial literacy. All right. Financial literacy. Now, I've, I've heard and I'm hearing that schools now are bringing a financial literacy program inside of the curriculum. I think that is great. I think it's absolutely awesome. But guess what? If we don't take the time to really double down on helping our students understand money, or helping our students understand budgeting, or showing them how to make informed financial decisions, they won't ever get to a place of making mature financial decisions. You know, sad to say, like in my household, like my mom and dad didn't talk a lot about the household expenses with me, right? We would talk about, you know, money for shoes, or going out for the weekend, or getting a prom suit, hanging out with the boys, hanging out with the girls, money going to the movies. I think the first time we really started talking about money was probably my senior year when it was time to go to college, right? It was time to go to college. So traditionally, we've been having $40, $400 conversations, but then when it's time to go to college, now we're talking about $40,000 that we need for college. Guess what? It's so important right now that we begin to help our young people become financially literate. Now, if you're watching this video, I want you to find who's the richest financially person in your family. Like who's the person in your family that understands money? Who's teaching the financial literacy in the household? Is it the mom? Is it the dad? Is it an uncle? Is it a grandmother? Is it a CPA? Is it somebody at your church? If they're not teaching it in school, Somebody has to help our students understand all the tools uh, that they need in their toolkit. And one of those things is in the area of financial literacy. Okay? So that's a skill that I believe students should also learn. Number five, I talked a little bit about this in my last video. But the skill called emotional. Emotional intelligence. Right? Now, what's emotional intelligence? This is a skill, and uh, <laughs> I was talking to some of my um, friends and colleagues a few months ago. I uh, was talking about, like, Kenneth, are you a very empathetic person? 
right? And, you know, we were talking about me taking the time to be more empathetic, right? Be more empathetic around and showing empathy to other people. Now, I'm, I'm jolly 95% of the time. I'm a go-getter 95% of the time. And when I may experience somebody who's not a go-getter, sometimes I can be too hard. But guess what? As I'm developing emotional intelligence, it's so important that our students develop emotional intelligence, right? Becoming self-aware of how you feel and how they think. Becoming self-aware of understanding their thoughts and not the thoughts of someone else, right? Now also in this emotional intelligence area, being able to know how to relate with other people, other people who may be going through some challenging times, right? Being able to navigate the different things that hang, that happen in life. Maybe a, a, a dear classmate was in an accident and they died. Or maybe a dear parent died and transitioned on. Being able to help our students understand grief, understand loss, understand depression, understand when they're sad, understand when they need to speak up and defend for themselves. That's a skill that I believe that we have to help our students develop, this area of emotional intelligence. Number six, adaptability. and resilience adaptability and resilience now a few years ago we all went through a situation where we had to adapt we had to make some changes and I believe that when things don't go as planned it's so important that we take the time to make sure our students have what they need so they can bounce back yeah, when there are setbacks, showing them how to bounce back, showing them how to embrace challenges, showing them what to do when things may be a roadblock and show them how to keep moving forward. When they have a down week, how to keep moving forward to make the next week a better week. When there's a breakup in the household and a young person is right there in the midst of their mother and their father, showing them how to adapt and now be resilient. Now you may say, well, that's too young to be teaching for teaching to a student. Eh, I disagree. And here's the reason I disagree. Because a lot of our kids are playing video games. And in video games, you got to learn it. You got to adapt. You, do, you have to be resilient. And you can see your young person, like when they lose, they put the video game back in and play it again until they win. That's also a skill that's going to help prepare them for their career and help prepare them for life. And that is to be adaptable and be resilient. And here's the last one. Here's the last one. Number seven. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I'll possibly go to another screen. All right, the seventh one is having an entrepreneurial mindset. I think I spelled that word wrong, but you get it. Number seven, the, the skill that I believe students need to have is an entrepreneurial mindset. You know, the video we watched earlier, A student end up working for government, B student end up working for corporations, C student start enterprises, entrepreneur. Are C students more capable of taking risk? Especially when maybe they heard in school, well, you didn't do good in school, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. So now they have to take risk. What if we took the time to cultivate risk taking in our schools? Now, I believe schools, they help us be safe, right? We got to play a lot of times within the boundaries, right? But entrepreneurs, they play or we play outside the boundaries. Can we, not, can we now encourage our students to think creatively, to think 
innovatively to now approach things and think about how we can take this opportunity to make a new opportunity. To show them, hey, yeah, you could go work for government. Yeah, you could go work for a corporation. Or you could now figure out how to sell and market the idea that's in your mind. An entrepreneurial mindset. Teaching students how to be proactive. Teaching students how to work when nobody else is looking at them. Teaching students to go on. Teaching students to learn how to invest, to, to grow, to lead, to develop, to speak up for themselves on what they believe. I believe entrepreneurial mindset is another skill that we must help our students develop. All of these skills, guess what? It's going to take more than our school teachers and the principals to teach these skills. So parents, will you, will you rise up? Mentors, will you rise up? Coaches, will you rise up? Grandmothers, uncles, aunts, church buddies, will you rise up to make sure our students have these skills? Here are the skills. Number one, critical thinking and problem solving. Number two, effective communication skills. Number three, time management and organization. Number four, financial literacy. Number five is emotional intelligence. Number six, being adaptable and developing the skill of resilience. And number seven, entrepreneurial mindset. Critical thinking, problem solving, effective communication, financial literacy, emotional skills. Who will be the person to help our students develop these skills? Well, listen, I'm Kansas Simmons, and it's my goal to make sure that you have all that you need to succeed in school and to succeed in life. And again, thanks for watching this video. Just because you're here, I want to make sure you get a free copy of my book, Scholarship Secrets Revealed. Uh, simply go to scholarshipsecretsbook.com or click the link down below. Let me know where to send the book. All I ask you to do is take care of the small shipping and handling fee. And if you need a little help in getting better grades, simply go to Play Your A Game book. Play Your A Game is all about how to stay motivated, remain focused, and succeed in school and life. Click the link down below or go to Play Your A Game book, playyouragamebook.com to get access to these resources. Hey, I'm Kansas Simmons. Remember this, only one game in life counts, and that is to play your A game. Hey, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.